the Epic Game Store exclusivity deals, pornographic visual novels on Steam, the size of the new Pokédex. You know, arguing over controversies is what keeps the flames of passion for so many men-child all over the internet alight. And today, three more men-children are ready to stoke the flames just a little bit more. Welcome to Clapfoot After Dark. <laughs> okay, well, we went to the wrong place. Well, you guys saw our it. show notes, but that's okay. There's literally, it's literally that's what a, HB that's just all said. It says. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody. I am HB. Uh, with me to my side here is uh, Riggs Matt. or Matt. Matt. Uh, I guess you go for Matt as Matt. And in here is Max. How are you guys doing? He's he's right in the middle of us where he belonged all. I know, right? <laughs> I can literally I could stare down at you both. I just yeah, <laughs> we, you we have to look up at you. And I don't see you because you're not really there. Actually, <laughs> this is so awkward. <laughs> it would be really funny to me. I was saying you should get a green screen background so that I can key out just your head. Oh, that would be really and funny. Then just have your floating head. That's really um, cool. Oh man, put me in space. I want to be in space. <laughs> I know, <laughs> man. We talked about, background. but that was the topic of like last uh, the last uh, podcast. Today we're talking about something else, man. Uh, first of all, Max, uh, what are you drinking? I am drinking Port Charlotte 2007 heavily peated whiskey. And the reason why I, I like, I, I took a sip of this earlier and I like gagged because I'd just been eating these like sweet little candies and this is heavily peated. So it's like, it's like trying to eat an orange after, you know, brushing your teeth with mint toothpaste. <laughs> can, you hold, can you hold it up to the camera real quick? I want to test something. Sure. <laughs> there we go. Nice. We we, look at of it. of high it. class. We got a Max camera. I'm gonna Fantastic. Be do, do you can see it's lot. mostly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, and what about you, uh, Matt? What I, are you drinking? I don't know. What am I drinking, HP? You are drinking a sidecar. Uh, sidecar is a, a, a drink with brandy, some triple sec, and some lemon juice. Wow, that sounds God. excellent. <laughs> you haven't tried yet, actually. Do you like it? No, it's really good. <laughs> Do you like it? No, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I, it's, I really like it. Um, <laughs> I, I, was trying, I was trying to do the bit from Wayne's World, but we didn't do like... I, I didn't have like a Pepsi Cola to like work with. <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't have like a, 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 like a brand or something. Yeah like. yeah, like hold up a bag of Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then cut to my camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, controversial things in video games. Uh, and uh, Some of the things that I mentioned before were highly debated throughout the year, um, particularly this past year. Uh, but there was this, um, there was this particular, uh, how do you say, uh, well, how do I go to this link? <laughs> Why is the... it? Because that's the original Twitter. Oh, okay. Uh, so... There was this original Twitter by T9. Can I cut now? Yeah, you can cut. Yeah, by T9. There was like, what is your most controversial vi uh, video game opinion? And that like, actually opened a fair amount of like cool discussions in the comment. <laughs> so I would like to ask you guys, what is your most controversial opinion in, in, in video games for you personally? Um, let's Un unrelated to Max. that man defective pikachu was actually like this like pretty damn good like it was a it was it was a terrible movie but it was made better because they were pokemon my movies. controversial like, opinion right. is that is that a, is that a video game a, a video game opinion <laughs> or a film opinion i'm just saying my, my sorry i just opinion, i saw the picture i had to mention <laughs> my on, first man. controversial opinion is that i think pikachu needs to be eaten by a cat he is vermin it is a mouse <laughs> i mean, I mean I being, that being said i don't think there's any Cat yeah. that can eat, a, for instance, a capybara, and is also a rat. So, I would argue that there are many cats that can. They're just very big and almost extinct. Have you seen a capybara? Have you seen a tiger? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have jaguars in America, in South America, just at the same as capybaras. They don't get eaten that often, I think. I, I think not. I don't know actually. I wonder uh, if capybaras why are not. I also really like Pikachu, so I was lying. Pikachu but. is a very adorable character. Anyway, uh, Max, they what just, is they your... They look like they're just me. <laughs> <laughs> what is your Like, they don't uh, look like they can defend themselves opinion? at all. 
Uh, my controversial opinion is I think that all video game consoles should. Should what? I think all video game consoles should be free. All video game consoles should be free. Yep. It I makes thought you were going no to say should be like thrown me. into a bonfire. Should be free. Well, I why? mean, it's kind of the same thing, isn't it? Why? Why, why is that? <laughs> why? Why do you think it should be free? You know what doesn't make sense to me is how you can just like. Why is it that in order to play the games, uh, like to be able to even use it, you have to buy this piece of hardware? So, like, unlike uh, like a PC, which does a lot of different things, when you buy this console, you spend all this money. You're basically just buying yourself into locking yourself into buying games. Like you have all these exclusivity deals, and like, why why are you paying to lock yourself into playing a certain subset of games? Shouldn't it be the other way around, where almost like they give if if a company gave you like PlayStation, they gave you a free play, free PlayStation, just totally free. Shouldn't then you when you buy the game that you want to play? that the dev company should be the one paying for the PlayStation and subsidizing it? Wouldn't well, that make more sense along the same lines? as basically the same way as Steam does it. Well, like, Steam is free. Like, the company should be the one paying for the console, not the consumer. Well, maybe. Uh, well, we know f- for a fact that, like, the vast, vast majority of the game consoles, they are... It's true they are not free, but they are mostly sold at cost from, like... Uh, Sony and Xbox and, 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 and Nintendo, they actually make no money out of it. I understand where yeah. you're coming from, but like, they're not trying to, set, to, to make money. Nintendo is the only one that makes money on their consoles. Not very much. They, but still, but they, still, they're still the only ones that, that make money. some money, which makes sense. They're offering something that is not available anywhere else, right? I think that like, from a developer's standpoint, um, in, I, under, I understand that like, from the company it would be like, well, we spend all this money on R&D and we make sure that our platform is uh, uniform so that if something comes in here, you know that it can play, that it works most of the time. Uh, I, and that's the value that they're bringing for you to have that console. You're not just buying the console, you're buying the whole you know, back, uh, back end that that company can supply. So, that being said, I wouldn't mind if I got a play, uh, PlayStation for free because, <laughs> God damn it, I haven't bought one in forever. So two, two things. I just want to I just want to step aside for a minute. I realize that I should be looking over to you when we're talking and instead I look at the camera quite often. And one of the things that's really funny is our room is really not set up for me because I can't look to the right. So it's very hard for me to look Like at physically. Like I he physically cannot. can't look to the right because I have a broken eye. So if you ever see me like kind of like looking past HB, it's because it's very awkward for me to turn right. Um, besides that, <laughs> um, I, it was just a, an observation I had. All these streams and I haven't the really... The observation you had? Yeah. Nah. Um, so uh, nah. I, I, uh, the funny thing is, is Xbox actually did this um, with... Uh, or Microsoft actually did this with the Xbox at Microsoft stores. Uh, you could, um, uh, like Mark says uh, in the chat, he said, uh, it wouldn't it look like the cell phone industry. It, it actually was kind of like that. You yeah. signed like a two year contract or whatever. And um, you got a kind of a free console or a console that you paid for. I'm going to keep slapping the table. Um, <laughs> you got a console that you paid for. Um, and, uh, or you, that you didn't really pay for. Yeah. Well, you, you, you end up paying like, like a cell phone. Like you, 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 offset the costs through through actually make sure that you're buying the games and their product right mm-hmm. which i think it's fantastic uh, honestly uh like I, I coming from from a region of of the world that uh has a very low um buying power particularly in regards to electronics right any time that you have options like this it uh, opens up a lot a lot of possibilities for people that um don't don't have wouldn't have access otherwise yeah. because they not can they cannot dish out like in Brazil a PlayStation costs like literally a thousand dollars like the equivalent of a thousand dollars in here it's insane I don't think they I don't think they did it for very long but um, no I think I think isn't isn't that still in 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 in, in vogue like it's still, the the program still exists right uh, it's just not publicized I guess but but I'm pretty sure it still exists I never heard anything about being canceled it it might. Uh, but the last time I heard it wasn't that successful. So, and it was only in some test regions anyway. 
So. Well, I think that maybe in region, more affluent regions, you wouldn't be as successful because the, the, the need for it is much smaller in, than in other regions. But I think that emer particularly emerging countries in which like, you still have like, a vast majority of a population that is, is starting to get money, so it's starting to be able to uh, afford the price of video games which is very very expensive right and like as a with with their like with their extra cash like india and china and brazil and all these the, these countries that might actually be way more successful i can totally see that being successful i mean successful. game consoles are just now being allowed to be sold in china again so fair enough uh yeah Ross. what Cross Keys was just saying in chat, he says, controversial opinion. I just really wanted to comment on this because I got a strong opinion about this anyway. The, the continued digitization of games is a long-term bad thing. I disagree. I feel like I feel like this whole DRM thing blows my mind that people are upset about it to begin with. Because, for, I mean, I'm biased because my whole life I've been playing multiplayer games and like games like uh, Asheron's Call and like World of Warcraft, mostly MMORPGs. So I was paying $15 a month. But the reality is that every game you've ever bought at any time, you never owned at like the license to. Even when you bought StarCraft and you owned the disc, like they gave you a CD key that came with that disc. And you, what you bought wasn't the, the disc itself, you bought the right to. So this whole DRM thing, like this, like you, you should have the right to own your your video games and the right to use them for the rest of time. Is it's it's a silly argument because is it, is like it? I can't use my <laughs> I can't use my StarCraft disc. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I can't. I like I have a StarCraft disc on my shelf. Yeah. I, I can't use it. It doesn't but, work. Anymore. That's that's fair. But that's it. Like, but the disc still works, and that. But that's very particular to first of all to multiplayer games. Up until now until very recently, a single player game that you bought, you would, you, you would be able to not only play it in perpetuity, you wouldn't go offline because some, somehow the DRM server got disconnected uh, and, and, and now you can play like a fucking single player offline game, which is insane in my opinion. And not only that, I have the right to resolve. Like throughout the whole history of humanity, you are able to, to uh, buy a good and if I like it, if I don't like it, whatever, I can resell it. It's going to depreciate. Yeah, of course it's going to depreciate, but you're going to resell it. I understand that being something for, uh, for, for multiplayer games, but for single-player games, I think that's, that, that's not as clear-cut and definitely not a, not a ridiculous argument or anything like that. On top of it all, there is the whole aspect of you being able to maintain an archive of what we are producing. And again, throughout the whole history of humanity, you were able to maintain an archive because everything was analog, nothing was digital. Now with a lot of things being digital, how do you make sure that things don't just disappear into the ether like a lot of games are already disappearing? I don't know if it is as clear cut as you're putting it. Here's an example <laughs> that I am going to give about why I agree with HP, which is rare. <laughs> By the way, oh, it's people. very rare. I'm H very surprised, actually. I was going to say, you're going to agree with Max. I don't know. I think, I think creatively, you and I agree pretty well quite often. Creatively, um, but, yes. But Everything I think, else. I think opinion-wise. <laughs> um, so, so uh, I was really into this game called Marvel Heroes. I'm sure a lot of people will remember it. It was like a Diablo-style Marvel yeah, game. Yeah. It was very, very good. And so I played a lot of it, and I, I put quite a bit of money into it. Um, and it was, uh, they released a PS4 version. I'm like, man, I'd love to fucking play that on my couch. And, uh, they released a spider, Spider-Man, a bunch of Spider-Man characters. And I had most, I, I bought most of them, but I was missing Spider-Gwen, who's a very popular character. And they locked her behind a bunch of loot boxes. So I bought as many as I needed till I got her so that I could complete my collection. This is the one time I remember telling Mark about this. I remember saying to Mark, I'm like, I'm going to do it just to see how long it takes. And How I much did you end up spending? Ninety-five dollars, I think, which isn't bad, really. But, but, it's but for if one you think character. about it, if it, it, <laughs> that is like three times the pre the price of the. Well, I, I mean, I'm assuming the game was sixty dollars. Actually, is one and was, a half the was, time. It was free, but it was free. Yeah. So let's took the price of like a, a like a medium sized game, thirty dollars. Yeah. Like, let's fuck it. Let's make it like a, of a triple A game, sixty dollars. You yeah. still spent it like more, more than, than the amount of the price of the game. I think that's a different. Uh, a different controversy 
Which but, we, hold one on, that we I, should I, hold talk on, I'm about. not done yet. Okay, go that, on. The controversy is not over. This okay. is why I agree with you. Okay. And then two weeks later, they shut down the game. So literally, oh. you spent ninety dollars, and now you are locked and I, out. And I have nothing to show for it. Um, no. and it, it to this day really, really pisses me off because I really, a, I really liked that game, and the only reason they shut it down was because Disney changed their uh, partnership for uh, video games, and they decided that they didn't want to have this um, on, on on the books. There you go. That's it's it. That's anec- the only reason. An- anecdotal evidence, of course, but yeah. <laughs> I think it's a pretty good counterexample of why it is important for people to actually do have to actually have ownership. And there are some legislators that are saying that a lot of these uh, EULAs, like these end user agreements, might not be as binding as they expect because it depends on the country, right? Like we have like these very broad generic agreements. I mean, that's not just for video games, for all kinds of software and digital goods that you have, which was a huge deal with uh, the music and the film industry, right? Uh, so that eventually, now for instance, with the music industry, now there's several cases in which if you own the physical copy, yeah. You're allowed to rip it and put it in your iPod and whatever and have it there. The music industry much cleverly decided that, you know what, I'm going to give you a better offer. I'm going to yeah. give you a better way to have your music instead of having to go all through this trouble, which is fair. They are allowed to do it. And if enough people like it, that's great. But the people do have the option. If they want to keep the music that they bought, they can in some way, shape or form. I, th- I think there is still a lot of... A lot of um, uh, legwork that has to be done yeah. in order to catch up a lot of that with like the renting business or the Netflix business it's different but you're not actually renting the reality is that no matter what the 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 little the end user agreement says in Steam or on Epic or on any other thing is different than Netflix you're not renting a business you're buying it's clear that you're buying this game if you're buying a good there's a lot of, uh, uh, how do you say, not lawmakers, a lot of cons- consumer philosophers, I guess. I, 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 there's a word for that, I forgot the word, that argue that it's a good and therefore you, you're able to sell it. Should be able to resell it, keep it, modify it, do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, they're trying to get that with digital purchases, um, where they're, it's like tradable, but exactly. There, there's the, the opposite argument of that, which is like, the, like it's intrinsically like, not something where the value like changes because it, it there isn't a supply and demand of it, um, and and then that's usually the reason why goods are sold uh, on a on a secondary market. But mm-hmm. that that that's a longer conversation where it gets really really tricky. Um, and I, I don't know because uh, so as another bit of strange like anecdotal evidence is uh, I I got really I seem to get into really doomed games actually. I, this is like a <laughs> This is like a pattern of mine. I was really into, um, uh, what was that stupid Borderlands company game? Uh, Which one? The one that they released after Borderlands, um, Battleborn. I got into Battleborn. Oh, Battleborn. Oh, yeah, yeah, But It's not a Borderlands <laughs> game, but I, the Borderlands company. It's a company, yeah, yeah. Uh, I yeah. can't remember. Gearbox. Gearbox. Gearbox is the name of the company. Um, and so I, uh, but, uh, but I got into Artifact, which is the Valve card game. And, uh, got oh, you a, got into a, that? A couple of my friends got into it. Yeah, it's really good. Oh, it's like so good. I just the problem is, is they misunderestimated people's willingness to have a real digital card game, which is what it is. It's there's no it, you you buy cards and you play cards. There was no game like meta game around any of it, and that's why it failed, in my opinion. Um, but what I loved about it was that it was a real digital card game. So when you bought your cards, you had cards that you could then sell for real money or trade for other cards. It was literally like having magic cards, and I loved that. Um, now they're worth nothing. <laughs> so it's like... Uh, <laughs> so let me ask you, is that your controversial I don't know, man. That sounds like you just have something against microtransactions, <laughs> not necessarily the DRM argument. Well, the DRM is not, is, is not so much... It's just like that game is not played now. So there's no point in me having... And they also changed their monetization uh, aspect yeah. like, throughout the develop, like throughout the live life of the game, which is another problem. Which is like when games sell you on something and then they change it halfway, which does happen with a lot of games, particularly the ones that are not that successful. But I'm going to ask you then, is that your controversial opinion on game? No. So what is your controversial? Um, 
I think like the only this uh, this one's gonna bite me in the ass later. Okay, um, like professionally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but let's get into it. Um, I think that most indie games are not like very good. I mean, um, <laughs> what? Subje- subjectively. Uh, obviously. Is that a controversial opinion? I, th- I mean, I, I consider I mean, that. What games- is an indie game for you? Like, well, well, let's let's just characterize what is an indie game for you. Um. <laughs> like most of what's published on Steam. Um, That's fair. But is the, isn't that a numbers <laughs> game only? It, it could be. Um, I think a lot of stuff that people like tout as being like these indie darlings, maybe that's it. Like I don't think most indie darlings are good. I think actually the... Um, and this is, to be clear, my own opinion. No, no, no. <laughs> not, it's not objective. It's definitely subjective. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you don't get to express your opinion and I'll get shit of it. But, um, but uh, <laughs> The whole audience is from coming from an indie game to watch this. No, so I know. <laughs> I'm about to jump on you. <laughs> so so indie, indie darlings, I would say. Uh, Give me one. The ones that, uh, like Celeste <gasps> is a good example. Um, I bought Celeste looking forward to it because I really like Super Meat Boy and I just don't like Celeste. I don't think it's very special. But it's not Super Meat Boy. I know, but it's the same kind of game. Uh, it's not. I mean, it, it really is based on what I've played. <laughs> so, um, but um, uh, Shovel Knight, I, I don't think I like very much. Um, like games that are sort of touted as these like indie, I think actually the Dark Horse indie games are really, really more my thing. I think the games that don't really get a lot of attention that are indie games, I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now, but the ones that I've attached myself to a lot are ones that most people aren't really talking about that much. Um, And so I guess maybe it's an opinion. My opinion is like different than a lot of people. I'm just going to keep... You're you're just on the camera every time you do that. Um, (laughs) So I'm going to, I'm going to have to say, I'm going to have to say like, I, I just don't, my opinion doesn't align with what people talk about. It's like indie darlings. Let me, let me ask you, let me ask you a a follow-up question then. Do you think these games are not for you or do you, do you objectively think that they are not good games, period? No, that's why I'm saying subjectively. I also have a follow-up question. That, that, that's why I'm saying subjectively. I'm not saying they're poorly made. Like, I don't think I could look at Shovel Knight and say this game's poorly made. Okay, so but, what, what, what you're saying is that there are games that you like and your games you don't like. How is th- that's my most controversial opinion. I that you have games that you don't like? So, so what sparked this whole thing was that Twitter post that came up with, which was uh, suggesting that AAA titles are artificially keeping the prices of video games low. Yeah, let me pull up like the Twitter. Uh, yeah. One second. There, there you go. You can, you can switch to that. If, if you want to. I agree with Mark as well, by the way. He said, I just made the show great. I definitely just did. <laughs> you did that by coming on. <laughs> well, thank you, Max. So the, what the, twist, the, the original Twitter that uh, Max is referring to is uh, uh, Schism Navigator uh, saying, the price of video games have been artificially kept fixed by a combination of digital, microtransactions, and volume sales. AAA games should be around $100 with no micro, microtransactions to account for inflation and rising art production costs. This needs to happen for indies to price better. I mean, I fail to so, see how that relates to, Mac, uh, to, to yeah. Matt not particularly liking, but <laughs> this is the, how this conversation all got started. Go on, uh, Max, go for it. Right. So, so do you feel that like the the value of a AAA game is just that much more of an indie? Like, do you think that the the indies like do you think a AAA game is actually worth around a hundred dollars? Would you pay a hundred dollars for for? I mean, I, I guess that goes without saying because you spent ninety five dollars on the Quen suit. But like, what is the like? Would you pay a hundred dollars for like Shad um, Sekiro? Sekiro is not an indie game. No, but he's saying what? No, I know, but it's a AAA. Oh, oh yeah, 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 I would, but I'm all, but that's a huge like bias thing because I'm a big like um, from software dork. Would I pay a hundred dollars for like Zelda? Mm, probably not. I probably would skip it. And Zelda is objectively if, like and okay, my not as controversial. I particularly don't like Zelda: Breath of the Wild. I don't think yeah, it's a very I'm, good game. I'm with you, but uh, it's objectively a good game. Like I know that it's not for my taste, but I know their objective is a good game. So, so, so here's here's the deal: is I feel that I've gotten way more enjoyment from traditionally like AAA games over the last 
like if you look at my top, I, I kind of write a top ten games every year list I have for like the last four years, and if you look at them, there's like one or two indie games on there usually, and then the rest are pretty much like bigger budget games. And I I, I don't like intentionally do it. I after I actually I buy a lot of games, so like I buy a lot of indie games, and then I just don't find that I play them. I think the best quote unquote indie darling that really didn't get that much attention. And, but it was still kind of commented on as being very, very good that I played that I loved what in, in the last couple of years was the messenger. Um, and, uh, because uh, I just felt like it was doing some really cool stuff, but, um, but, but I just find that I can't, I don't play them for more than like the, um, past the sort of novelty of just like opening it and looking at it. Mm-hmm. Like since I, I, I just don't, find myself like digging in and um there's a lot of stuff that conceptually i should be really into like night in the woods should be right up my alley right uh really if you think about everything that i like and all the things that align i, I should love that game and i just don't that's fair but um and and i think that's why but it's do you think night in the woods is not a good game no i think it's a great game but not i but not for me uh it's not a great game for me um, that's fair and so maybe this isn't too controversial but uh okay so like as as coming from a game we make independent games and maybe that's why i think it's controversial but i do think that the dark horse games are the ones that i i find more interesting um and i know a lot of people talked about it but i played a bunch of Frostpunk last night and i think that game is brilliant i don't know how indie it is though because i'm not really familiar with the studio so well but, the, so let, let's let okay so for instance i like I have a game that I played and I love, which is uh, uh, Monument Valley, both one and number two. It's a fucking, it's a mobile game. Mm-hmm. It's not even a, like a console game. It's a mobile game, like very, very small. Uh, and like I paid, I don't know, $3 for it, yeah. something like that. That's the price of it. And that's like, oh, incredible amount of money for a, mo- for, for a mobile game. And I enjoyed more than like, I don't know, any other game like it just it was a short game but i enjoyed playing that game more than any other game that i played in the past while mm-hmm. last year like i was playing monument by last year so i don't know i think i wanted to bring it up then another controversial a controversial question then that is kind of re- kind of ties it with this is that like the whole point is that should if games should cost more because so that we can can avoid microtransactions we can avoid loot boxes so how does that square off with the fact that in other kinds of media, for instance, uh, a, a, even a book or a movie, you pay $15, sometimes $20 for a two-hour experience, and everybody's pretty much okay with that. But then if you have a game that gives you two hours of enjoyment and it costs $15, everybody cries foul. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me break something down. That's such a good point. Let me break something down. Uh, video games are the most uh, lucrative entertainment industry in the world. Uh, so to take that into consideration, the video game industry as a whole makes more money than the film industry. Um, so when I hear things like games are too cheap or they're, they haven't been priced out, I think it was more that they were too expensive in the past. Um, that is my feeling because there's no way we get to be the most lucrative industry and have our things outprice other industries that are considered extremely successful such as the film industry i might disagree because i think that well, the, pro- the, prob- the problem <laughs> the problem with this kind of statistic is that we are talking about a lump sum it's kind of like saying like well i have two chi- i ate, i have two chickens you have zero so both of us have one chicken in average it's not true yeah. there, there the reality is that for the vast majority of games for the vast majority of of, of uh, studios they are not part of the big earners. People have to scrap like tooth and nail to actually make any money. After you are a certain size, then yeah, you absolutely are raking it in, and which, which for me is what makes the whole concept of microtransactions. And not only, I actually have nothing that might be my, my sort of a, a little bit of a, a controversial opinion is that I don't have anything particularly wrong with microtransactions. As a, as, a, as a concept, Whoa. as a concept, but I do have problems with uh, 
uh, very aggressive and exploitative loot microtransactions. Boxes. Loot boxes and blind boxes and fucking season passes. I think season passes are very exploitative and shit like that. Uh, but, but what I'm saying is that when you are at that level, yeah, you're raking in a shit ton of money. You, you, you are. You really are. So maybe you shouldn't use that. And then if you didn't use all these extremely exploitative um, form, forms of monetization, the difference wouldn't be this big. The, the, the disparity between, for instance, the movie industry and the game industry wouldn't be this big. And we still would have a lot of good games. And here's the difference. I think the, the main difference. A game doesn't have to be the most amazing game in the world to be worth $10, in my opinion. You, for, in my opinion, if you have a game that does give you some joy for a short amount of time, it, maybe it is worth $10. But it's not what happens right now. Even with, if, like, the most clear example for that, in my opinion, is the mobile game industry. Uh, because the mobile game, game, everybody's like, ah, it's a mobile game, fuck it. It's going to be free, full microtransactions. But you do have some games, very few and far between, they're like really, like, very few, that are really good and they cost a certain amount of money, but they cannot even cost more than $3 because more than $3 is like literally not feasible and right now, I have I have a I have a small counterpoint. Okay. Um, video games are also the only industry outside of maybe music, but music might be stretching it, where you can make a living as an independent creator. Uh, you cannot make a living as an independent movie maker. You can't sell your movie. That's not um, true. Fucking Kevin Smith the, 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 the started he's, his whole... He's not an independent movie creator. He's not he was, anymore, but he, he never, started. He never was. He was sold to public <laughs> original studios. He started his whole fucking career doing an independent movie. He sold it to a, a publisher, though. He sold it to Miramax. Yeah, but you start your career as an independent. But he, but he didn't... Look at the but YouTube... He but look he at the YouTubers. Pro, but he did, the YouTube filmmakers. He didn't publish it independently. And look YouTube, at the YouTube. YouTube is different. I YouTube have a story. Not I have a but story you, you're excluding Michael You're excluding Jackson. a huge fucking swath of people they, they, saying YouTube is different. YouTube is not they, different. There are filmmakers one way, sh- one way <laughs> or another. I'm talking about like movies that are a story, not making videos. Like YouTube, How? there are people that do that on but YouTube. They, they, they don't make a living off of it. Yes, some do. Well, you're going to have to point some to me because I've never heard of that. They do not make a living. They, 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 that's how they start their career for sure. But most of them will not make a living that way. And most of the biggest videos that are films on YouTube are but, usually like fan made like anime videos that are like live action or something. That and is they, fair. And they can't make money on that. So that's fair. But that is with all industries. Like basically but, but video games, you, you when you when you are nobody, when you nobody knows you, the chance of you being found out is very low and you're going to make a small amount of money. Is in the fashion industry, is in the writing industry. I don't see how it's that so different from games until you are found out, until you have a product that not only you made a good product, but you also got lucky one way, shape or another from either being picked up by some influencer. And influencer can be in any, in also in any field. Like there are well, fashion influencers. They are, they're, they're like if you get Oprah to pick up your book somehow and put it on her good list, you would, can turn from zero to a, a celebrity in a moment. So I don't... You, 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 I never said you can't be successful. I said you can't make a living. And there is a really big difference between those two things. Um, in video games, you as a nobody can publish a game and actually make a pretty decent amount of money on it. You can't do that with books unless you have a following. You actually, in order to self-publish and actually make a lot of money, I mean... But even, you, even you're publish, confounding making a lot of money with making a living. No, no. I'm, I'm, when I say make a lot of money, I mean like make a li- making a livable salary. Um, it, it's it's not the same thing. Uh, Wild Boar, the guy that did Parahumans. It, what, is, what is that? Well, Parahumans is a blog. It's a, basically a blog history. Like it's a blog. It's it's a story. It's a, like a sci-fi, not sci-fi. I guess it's a, like alternate hero's story. Uh, he published it on his blog. He published for I don't know three years, four years. Made. He's independent. He didn't have a publisher. Still doesn't have one. He's trying to publish his whole novel. Uh, made a living so that's what i'm saying like, like does he make a wor- living or is it something that he does on the side because no no, he made a living because, out of it because th- there's there's definitely the argument to be made about like a patreon or something like the guys who do the um the boss town dynamics videos boston dynamics boss town not boss oh yeah the carter crew <laughs> yeah um <laughs> they they don't make money on their videos they make money on their patreon which which is fair um but they're the exception whereas in video games a lot of people are making money just through independent publishing because you can just publish is it really a lot of people if you think about yes. like the whole the whole, no but if you think about the whole amount of people 
that actually make games that publish on Steam, everybody that publishes on Steam is a video game maker, a video game developer of some sort. I'm not talking about the caliber of them. Mm -hmm. So the amount of people that actually can make, look at, go to any Reddit, like game devs or whatever, the amount of people that say like, oh, I made, I spent five years making a, a video game and like I, I crashed and burned and now I have nothing is literally like almost every day. Yes, I'm saying it's more. Po I'm not saying it's like this isn't black and white, obviously, but I'm saying it's 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 far. I think it's far easier to publish games than it is to get into other industries. I think I except agree. For, I think except for me. I think yeah, this music. actually. This goes right back to actually that that Twitter post like perfectly. This whole hundred dollars, <laughs> like, would you pay a hundred dollars for a AAA? The I think there's actually a missing argument there. He's saying that the the these AAA companies are, are creating this uh, this artificially low price point or high low price point to to push out the indie. But I think there's actually a reverse function there as well in that. Um, the tools that we use to create video games now are getting more complex such that a single person can now put out a video game like mm -hmm. unturned that's been going on in the chat here, and make a shitload of money which is which is not realistic like 20 years ago it was like you needed a team of 20 people to put out even the most basic game. and uh and i think that that's really like like to matt's point about the authors like you can to this day you can still as a single person write a book publish it and make a bunch of money but it's so much harder like like i i would argue it's harder to be a successful writer than it is to be a successful single solo game dev <laughs> I mean, yes. let's be honest. No, I, I got to be a little bit more. I think that making the product to a, an acceptable level, making a good product to an acceptable level in which people will enjoy it and, 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 and decide to buy it or pay. doesn't matter if they're buying through buying the game or if they're using Patreon or if they're donating, whatever. They're giving you money in order to continue making sure that you are living, continue doing that trade. Right? My criteria was you can make a li you can like it's livable. That, okay, that's that, that, exactly, job. exactly. So in order, like something like that, like the amount of single person development teams is not that big in actuality. Yeah. We do hear a lot about them because when somebody like fucking Toby Turner, uh, 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 Toby, Toby Turner. Fox. Toby Fox, sorry, not Toby Turner. Toby Fox does it. <laughs> Toby Turner, his name. It's a, Toby Fox, change your name. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's better. When when somebody like him makes it, like it's it is a huge deal. Of course, it is a huge deal. I think that Ryan, I agree with you, Max, in which the the tools are much better, so that people now can, if they really uh, apply, make something out of it alone, completely alone. I think that. It, it always hap that always happened before when you were writing. If you're a writer, you don't necessarily need seven other people to make your craft. If you're a painter, you don't need that to make your craft. If you're a sculptor, you don't need that to make a craft or any other sort of, the vast majority of crafts. Uh, the only one that I would say is a little bit different is maybe filmmaker. It's very hard to make a movie with only one person. You pretty much can't, yeah. Because you, can, like, uh, you can. You can make stop motion, I guess. I mean, you could shoot yourself. Or you in, can make animation. Yeah, you could, there's stuff you can't there's do. There's definitely animators. But, but I think that in that case, the, the, the tools still hasn't catch up to a point in which you can make a... Uh, for, in, in order for you to make a solid, reasonable end product completely alone... Is there yet? I don't think is that. That's the difference. So there's no market. What, what what I was kind of getting at is there's writing books is 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 hard just because the market is not there uh, in the in the way it is for some of the other um, industries. Um, so so that's a that's sort of a chicken and egg problem. Um, music there is a marketplace. It's very easy and uh, you can publish pretty much anything on Spotify and get a cut of like the subscriptions and all that stuff. That's easy. Um, games, there's a marketplace. There's many marketplaces. Film, there is no marketplace. YouTube's a marketplace, but nobody's watching like film films on YouTube so much as they're watching other content. Um, those film films very very rarely get a lot of attention unless they're like viral. Okay, but um, uh, who is, uh, like, they're still producing? That's what I'm getting. They're at. still, but they're still like like just I'll, I'll harp on a little bit that people on YouTube are still producing a form. A film thing, otherwise you wouldn't be on YouTube. Well, I'm talking about that. You know, I'm I know what I'm talking. Like, I know you're talking that's about. That's like content creation. That's not like a film. Yeah, though. but I think that that's a distinction that is a little bit 
hard to make. If uh, okay, let me make no, a, a different. Let me make a different. Let me make a different. It's not a hard distinction. Let me make a different distinction. No, I don't. I don't think it's that clear. Sometimes, uh, a visual novel on Steam. Yes. Made with the visual novel editors. Is that a game or is that a book? It's interactive, so it's a game. A, a, a board game is interactive. Is that a game? Yes, you just said uh, game Choose is your own adventure. Is, is that a game? No, it's a book. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, but there, if, are, but there, if, are, there <laughs> are all... But if choose your own adventure is published as a book... Like, it's, but just because it's published as a book, it's, it's giving you in a different form... It doesn't mean it's, it, it's not valid. But it's published example. in book marketplaces. What I'm trying to say about YouTube is I'm not talking about YouTube creation. I don't care if it's like but technically it's, put on a... You don't care. It doesn't mean that make... It, What's but that's my what, argument? But that's, but, no, but what I'm <laughs> what saying about, is that... What about like... I don't know what, what you want. It's my what argument. I'm saying is that you can be a filmmaker. You can still be a filmmaker. You can still be an indie filmmaker on YouTube, whatever. doesn't matter that you're not making like... The type of movie that a AAA studio would make, or even an independent studio would make, but you're still making films sometimes every day to a, to a, to a, to a community that will enjoy it. Yeah, but I'm not talk. But like when I was making so the argument, that- I'm not talking about someone who's talking about what they had for breakfast in the morning or like the newest like Pokemon. So controversy. What, just because it doesn't what appeal I'm, to you? No, what I'm talking about is filmmaking, not like YouTube content creation, which is a different genre. Like it's not a narrative thing where you go and you do the work, you get a set, and you have actors and you have a script. Like it's not the same thing that I'm talking about. And yes, there are independent films, but like YouTube content creation is like. A, it's a separate genre. It's almost a separate. It's, it's the same as Twitch. Like I wouldn't call Twitch filmmaking. It's playing a video game on stream or like talking to people on stream. Like it's, it's, it. We're talking about two different things. Like content creation and influencing is a job that is separate from filmmaking. They over Fair they overlap. But you can definitely so, make a living as an influencer if you can somehow influence. Um, so but, why do you think? Anyway. Why do you think that is though? Like why don't they? Why don't they build YouTube like shows? Like five minutes. They've tr- they YouTube did. has tried um, to make their own stuff and it just doesn't catch because that's not why people are coming to the platform. I go to the platform because I want to watch Mr. Beast and I want to watch him and his friends do stupid things for a lot of money. And I know like everybody goes for different reasons, um, but YouTube is not a platform for typically for mm. traditional sort of filmmaking it is for influencing filmmaking or content well, creation. That, that, that's what i'm saying is like what about the patu like the guys make like an animation every two weeks with a story a narrative yeah no i mean and, and, and there's always going to be there's always going to be those exceptions my thing was just in general it's easier to make a bigger impact by publishing games i mean and make money off no. of it i um, still don't Evie, know, Evie, don't Evie, know Evie if i agree to... sorry go on he, he was saying phone. you have to you have to get premium to uh, you have to get premium to watch those shows. But I got to tell you, man, go watch uh, Cobra, the YouTube premium show. I think it's like the first seasons for free. It's so good. Which one, Cobra Kai? Like, it's so good. No, Cobra, Cobra Kai. Is really good. It's like yeah. the the Cobra, sequel to go. Karate. So good. But you know, to to kind of put a cap on that, it's not independent. So. Uh, but there are. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. No, what I'm saying. I never said that. My, my, my <laughs> argument is that I don't know. Like we don't have the statistics to say how many. Like because you never because we never hear about the Fuck failures. Fuck you! I have the statistics. Yeah, I'm not sure you do. <laughs> we never hear about the failures of the independent developments on Steam. So it's, no. I think it's a little bit hard to say. Like, well, sure, the tools are there for you to be able to make a, a fully completed product on your own. But I don't know if it's that easy I'm because saying, we only hear about the good things. What I'm saying is the the marketplace is there, though. There, there are marketplaces in place. Whereas for film, the, re, the only real marketplace is like Vimeo and YouTube. And they don't get a lot of attention in the same way uh, that other venues for film do. And with games, they do get a lot of attention or they can get a lot of attention. It's definitely gotten harder over the last couple of years. But, um, we get, literally have more than 200 games uploaded to yeah, Steam know, every I, day. I know, it's like it's insane. Much. But the marketplaces are there, especially with the Epic Game Store and Xbox and PS4 to actually publish your games. I mean, that's what we did, right? Um, and granted, we did have sort of a, a mobile history, but... Um, uh, the the fact that there was a marketplace meant that there was a place to um, make waves, um, and I think even in YouTube now, even with content creation, it's very difficult to make waves. 
to cut, to cut through the noise. Absolutely, um, but that's but, but that's with any saturated marketplace. When you are um, when or not even saturated, but like a marketplace that is established. When you are a musician in the Baroque era, if you're going to, if you're trying something modern, like you are gonna have a heart. You gotta be fucking Mozart to be able to literally break through. You know what I mean? It's the one guy. It, you only hear about the one person that succeeded. It's hard to hear about the people that didn't succeed because they fade out of history. Yeah. Anyway. Get on, get on, anyway. Get on YouTube. I go and watch like H3H3 and I laugh and it's really bad. Exactly. I, um, anyway. <laughs> anyway, but you still have things that are like, like a high speed microplier that are in you know, a whole story. Anyway. Um, Let's just talk about YouTube for the rest yeah, of the Yeah, right? <laughs> I know, right? But I, I wanted, <laughs> Canadian I, I, Fox was... Yeah, Sorry. I wanted to very quick uh, then, then, then since we are kind of like in this in in this topic uh, uh, about what is worth oh, paying, no. what it was for, what was worth paying or not. If that topic wasn't uh, uh, juicy enough, I know, right? What is worth paying or not? Uh, it's I, I just want to like to bring us down because we are getting close to the end, right? Uh, I wanted to know if you guys think that art can be unrelated from uh, being paid. If there's any art, yes. if there's any artist that should not be paid because they're doing art, because since, that since, is something I, I just want to just want to make clear for where I'm coming from. This conversation is because my fucking like pet peeve is when people say, "Oh, there are microtransactions, but don't worry, they are only cosmetics," as if the artist's job or you being able to express <laughs> yourself was not worth money or anything like that. But you, or, mean, we, you pay for it, though. Exactly. You literally pay extra for it. But, 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 I'm confused by that. No, but not the artist. They, they, but it's kind of like the value. It's like, no, no, that one's important. Or even worse, when people come to you and says, oh, you are doing what you love. Shouldn't you just be happy to be doing it? Oh, well. Okay, you know what? How about we just... <laughs> How about we actually, you and I come from a very specific like art background. So I want to know what Max's opinion exactly. on this. And we've been ranting and arguing for the last like 30 minutes and haven't let Max talk. <laughs> yes. Go on, Max. It's all you now. So right. That's what the people came here for was the ranting and arguing. Before, before I let you start, I just want everybody to know this is, has been me and HB for the last like eight years. We do not hate each other. I know that this happens like frequently <laughs> in other podcasts. Very common. HB and I, we, we like to argue. We literally do this for fun sometimes. Don't worry about and it. And sometimes we pick opinions that are different from the other from one. Each other too. We, we pick opinions that are, that are like the opposite of the one just for shits and giggles. Anyway, go, go on, ahead, Max. <laughs> you want to switch this camera? Yeah, we'll, we'll give you the, all the space. Nah, this is going to go. I mean, if you want to go on for hours and hours, I feel like. Um, this goes into the whole universal basic income thing. Like, if if everybody just had the money, like if everybody had money and you didn't need you didn't need to provide for yourself for your food and 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 money just didn't exist. This is the communist in me. Uh, like, would it? Do you do you think that? Do you think that people would just create things because they enjoyed it? Like. Do you think, like, do you think most writers, like I, I myself, like I love writing. I'm a terrible writer, but I love writing. But if I was, if I didn't have to provide for myself, like I would just write, like nonstop. And I feel like if you just take that on a macro scale, like if you just said, like scarcity guys for, from from Foxhole, if you didn't need anything, if you wanted for nothing, and everybody just had everything. Like, do you think you would just take your life and just make it all you could be? Or do you think you would just sit there and do nothing with your life? Like, my feeling is I, I'm just a positive person. I feel like artists in general, like, I think many, most people would pursue their interests and most people would end up in the arts. And the arts would just be this explosive cultural, uh, it, it would be an explosive cultural uh, uh, revolution, in my opinion. Yeah, that's fair. I think that's a... Uh... I personally agree with you. I, I think about this a lot. I think that if we uh, ever had the option, like I think about it a lot because that's what I want to do with my life, right? If I ever have the option to, uh, to retire early or something like that or end up winning a lottery or whatever, I don't think I would sit on my ass, you know? I think I already do things for fun and if as long as I keep creating and making some uh, like meaningful contribution, I think that's, that's fair. Personally, so I think that there is intrinsic value, and I think it's why it's so it's so degrading to an artist when people say, "Oh, sure, 
you, you can do this in 10 minutes, so why would I pay you more than five bucks? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, my whole life I've been fucking training and honing my skills because it's, well, it's, 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 it's important, you know? Anyway, I think we are was, actually well, like, getting let close let to a conclusion. Like, as we got, we got, as we got an artist, oh, yeah. if you had, if, if you got a million dollars, like every month you just had a million, what would you have to be a million? It could be 5,000. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like what would you, what would you do with your life? I would what make you, origami the whole day. I don't know. So, <laughs> so I, I like money. Um, I like getting more of it. <laughs> I like Gold. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like what Mark just said in chat. I've had the same argument with Mark. Just FYI. Sorry. Um, Mark's right, but I like I like money. So like, on one hand, like if we're talking about a magical world where like I have any, I'm fucking Elon Musk and can do whatever the fuck I want. Like, I just money like literally like comes out of my pores and it's like very very easy for me. I have no, I've ne I'll never have to think about money again. Um, I would probably. I would probably keep writing um, because I would be able to do my own shit. And I wouldn't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I could publish my own shit, but then if everybody had money, then who's going to pay attention? Who's going to, who's going to go out and buy their own stuff or buy stuff? Who's Unless there's just like a fucking melting pot. But one of the things that I like about money is money creates a market and market creates demand. Demand creates uh, sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Demand creates a, I don't know what you're referring to, to be honest. Demand creates like um, trends, and um, that becomes sort of culture, and and then so those who have money often create the trends, yeah. which is kind of interesting. There's a there's a lot there's a lot there, but if I had all the money in the world, I would probably still write just because I'm a gigantic dork but, and but, I like but, to think. But so here's if my I question. don't struggle, I, the one thing I will say is like <laughs> the struggles that I have had in my life are usually what drive me to want to create. If I didn't have them, maybe I wouldn't want to create. So what you're saying, so, what you're what you're saying is that you wouldn't, you like, I I I don't know. I think I think differently. If I had a, a, a like a, I had my my living condition and my my well being taken care of, so that I would be able to. I don't know if I don't give. A, Flips ass. If what 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 is the most sought out aspect of art or anything like that? I I'm if I'm still being able to make the art that I think I make I, I fold paper as my hobby for Christ's sake. Like nobody gives a flying fuck about that. Like literally, like you cannot sell the shit that I spent literally one year making. Like I couldn't sell for twenty dollars yeah. because they think it's too expensive. So I don't know. I think that. I, like I, don't, I think that in, that in that case I may be different, but I don't know. I, I, I think I would just make things that I personally think ingrains me, you know, makes me a better artist or I think will move the needle forward a little bit in the art department. Doesn't matter if it's gonna be is if it's gonna be thought as important or not. Oh for sure. I well, I, and I that's, think that's but like that's that's the bottom line, and that, that ties into what Mark was saying in chat, and what Krosky agrees with is that if there was no such thing as money, there'd be like a social currency, right? Like, and you as an artist, you should be a god among like these people, like you as like the programmers who are creating the games and and the artists who are creating the movies. Like, you guys are the ones that are driving the economy. We we have more than enough food that we could ever possibly want. We have more shelter that we could ever possibly want. If we just said, all right, all of that is taken care of. Like, what is it on top of that that we want as a society? And to me, it's art. It's games. It's video or it's movies. It's it's board games. It's all the stuff that we all the stuff that we are passionate about are all the things that, like you said, we don't take we don't we don't appreciate it's like it's like you said people just are like oh it only took you 10 minutes to make that piece but it took you a lifetime to get those skills and i think it should be that that we revere not this this dollar that for some but reason if it's it's not, a car <laughs> is worth more than than what you do but if it's not like what i'm saying is that i think there is that that is 
I, I, I don't disagree with you, to be honest. I think that it, I, I would uh, love to be ven veneered as a god because I'm an artist, but it's Wait, not the case. Wait, you are already <laughs> revered as a You're god. You already but, are. But the thing <laughs> is, um, let's say you weren't. The difference, I think that, that that is a little bit, there is a lot of uh, tinges in there, in that concept of that there's going to be some sort of currency. I agree there's going to be some sort of currency. Of either be popularity, either be power, there's going to be some sort of currency. But the difference is from the currency that we have right now is that your livelihood, literally your own existence, being able to eat and have shelter is on the line nowadays. Mm -hmm. If it's not, if, like, if money is out of the question, in which power and, and that doesn't influence the, your ability to survive, I think that's a tipping point in which then you can pursue a passion without worrying if it's going to be considered popular, if it's going to bring you more power. You know what I mean? I, I think that is the big difference. Yeah. Anyway, we are running a little bit late now. We are, uh, so I am going to cut this short. I'm so sorry, guys. I want to keep this to like one hour because otherwise we're going to start going to be opening it tomorrow. Thank you very much for joining us in the conversation. Thank you, Max. Thank you, Matt. No. Uh, uh, where thank can you. No we thing. find you guys? Uh, you can find me at nor Northern Pixels underscore at, on Twitter, and that's really the only place I care to. Max, if I people want to talk to you, where can they can find you? I do have a Twitter. Uh, I do try to keep my regular life updates there, but for the most part, you guys can find me on Fix Foxhole Official Discord. I'm just I hang out there all the time. So, By the way, you can ping me in there. Like as like I know a lot of you guys feel like you can't ping me in the Foxhole official Discord because it's like you know oh it's a dev but like that's like what I'm there for so if you want to talk about anything you can just ping me <laughs> I will I will always read it but I may not always respond depending on how how toxic that <laughs> comment might be and uh, you are known as Cla Crazy Flying Chicken for the if if there's anybody out there that doesn't know who he is he's Crazy Flying Chicken on Discord no that's Phil. Crazy flying chicken is Phil. Is <laughs> yes, that is that, is, is that the bit we're doing? Yeah. Is that the, what we're going <laughs> that's, for? That's the bit we're doing. Um, <laughs> I am HB. I am known as AGEBE -E on almost everything. Like because unfortunately, most of these websites do not accept only two letters. Go figure. Anyway, if you enjoy this podcast, uh, you can catch us every other Wednesdays at 6 p.m. EST on uh, Twitch.tv slash slash Clapfoot. We're gonna also gonna be archiving this uh, this video on uh, our YouTube on the Clapfoot YouTube channel, but you should join us on Discord to talk to us because then you can join our special uh, Clapfoot, Clapfoot after, dark. after Dark. It's our nightclub. Yes, ah. good. Ah. Uh, you can join us there and talk more about this. I but, hope you guys enjoyed it. By the way, this sidecar was really good. I just want to let you know. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate um, it. Who knows what is going to be on the next week? Depends on what we have well, available. Oh, we're going to start posting the recipes for HB's drink as well. We were going to do it this week. Oh, yeah. We couldn't do it. Um, also, Max's whiskey or whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it whiskey? Yeah, I'm almost out now. I'm actually oh, it's uh, capital letters, somewhere. by the way. Uh, uh, H and B are capital letters. Usually in, that doesn't matter to me. Usually it doesn't, but I think on Snapchat might my, my matter. Anyway. On your Snapchat. <laughs> yeah. I think on Twitter my matter. Oh, no, H I know. HP posts ludes on a Snapchat. So Ooh. just uh, it's after wanna... dark after all. It anyway, is, guys, is. thank you very much. Uh, enjoy your drinks yeah, I'm responsibly. Also post these Twitter and see you all after dark on the next week. <laughs> Stay sexy. <laughs> That's awful.